the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's readings in both the Apostle and in the Gospel reading, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is emphasizing the faith. So what he is addressing to his contemporaries and to his kinsmen, to the Hebrew, he is bringing up the Old Testament, the faith of Abraham, the faith of Isaac, the faith of Jacob, the faith of Moses, the faith of Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, Navi. And all of this, those what, had one thing in common. They had faith. So Abraham, when God called him, he did not hesitate to leave his fa father's home and to follow God. And when he promised him that he will give him a son, he never hesitated. He never questioned him. And when he received the son and was asked to bring him as a sacrifice, he trusted him. He didn't hesitate. He said, Wait a minute. What is going on here? You promised me that this, my son, is going, is going to give birth to many people. It's going to be the beginning of a huge nat nation. So how are you asking me now? The, my only son and I'm an old man now. You're asking me to bring him as, to, as a sacrifice? What you're talking about? But see, he did not question. He went sorrowful, yes, but he trusted God completely. He had complete faith, even though we don't, we don't know his thoughts, but we know his actions, right? Maybe he thought that, well, if he promised me, even if I will sacrifice him, he will raise him from the dead, right? Maybe that was his thought, but he, again, he had faith. Do we have this faith today? This is a question that we have to address every day, each one to ourselves. I have this faith, right? His son, Jacob, uh, when he was sold into slavery, he was obedient. Even when he was accused falsely and put in prison, he was obedient to God and he trusted God. And God rewarded him with all the blessing. He became the second person after the Pharaoh. Moses, he trusted him. And all these fellows that was that the Apostle Paul is talking in this reading to bring up to the Jewish nation and to show them that Jesus is the promised one. And in him, all these are accomplished. He is the one that the entire humanity was wait waiting for generation and generation for 5,500 years from the creation. And now, when the word of God took flesh, you went and crucified him. He is the one that came for us to redeem us from the slavery. That was the reason. He sacrificed himself as Abraham brought his son, the eternal father gave us his only begotten son for us, for our salvation, to wash down our sins. And he did not hesitate one second because he loved us so much. So what faith means for us? First of all, means love. 
right? Because if you love someone, you also trust him. You also have faith in him, right? As our kids, they love us and they trust us and they have faith in us because they trust that we are not going to leave them. And they follow us. So do we have the same relationship with God as our own sons and daughters where, while they are little, when they are getting young adults, they are very rebellious, as we do with our God, right? It's exactly the same pattern. But let us focus on them because he said, if you lead astray one of these little ones, that's the, that's the, the focus, you know, because little ones can be literally the little ones and little ones can be those that has no uh, hierarchy in the church, right? Is there empowered hierarchs, priests, deacons, and after are the, the rest. So those are also the little ones. Because we are chosen and put in, in charge with uh, the flock to take care and to lead the flock to Christ, not from Christ. So it's a, it's, it's a very important task for us. And he say, he's saying, if you lead one astray, it is better for you to take a millstone and to hang it around your neck and throw yourself in the, into the sea than to lead someone astray. And as you see, the, uh, the assignment that we have is to make sure that we are doing everything possible to make God known to you, to discover God's word, God's identity, God's love towards us, because this is what it is. So, and again, if we have love and respect and faith and trust in God, so then... We wouldn't find excuses because if you find if you ask somebody, so what means to you to have faith? So what we would ask, what we would answer to this question? To be a good Christian, to uh, pray daily, to go to the church, uh, to to be a good steward of God's gifts, to be merciful towards uh, others. And there are, the list is very long, right? So, but all of these are easy when we definitely have faith and love in, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But other ways, we will find excuses. Oh, you know, it's difficult. I, I'm busy, I have family, I have that and that. So that only that when we're starting putting these excuses right away shows our lack of faith. For example, if you love some, someone that much and it will come to you and ask, will say, listen, brother, I have this problem. Can you help me? What he will say, he will leave everything and will help you because he loves you, right? And love is above everything. But if he doesn't care, he said, you know, I have some other plans. I already have our other duties and so on and so forth, right? Because there is no care. There is no love, right? So this is faith. Faith is love. Faith is respect. So, and if we don't have these qualities, so how can we say that I believe in God, right? It's, it's, it's just, we are trying to lie to ourselves. We are trying to comfort ourselves with these excuses that, you know, actually I believe, but, you know, 
I have something else to do. I don't have time right now. So, and we think that, you know, we are okay in uh, earthly terms. We are okay with God because, you know, I have an actual excuse. It's not that I'm lying, but I have an actual excuse, right? But what God is for us, he's our father. He's our creator. He is the giver of life. He gave us everything. He is the air for us. Can we breathe without him? No. So the problem to this, that we have to involve our heart. We have to make room in our heart for him. To cleanse it, to open it, to open the doors of our heart wide that he can dwell in. To enlighten us. Because all these things are not possible without God. Even the faith itself. If we are not cleansing our heart, we would never be able to trust him. We will always we will find excuses. Because this is our human nature. From our youth, we are inclined, inclined towards evil. And we are very open to that. To that wide road, highway. Because the narrow ones, they are curved and it's difficult to run at the full speed. Right? If you have a supercharged car, so you prefer the highway with uh, three, four, six lanes that you can speed there. And you can drift and you can do whatever you want, right? But in the narrow one, it's difficult because you can't do the same. You have to stop because it's bombs, it's whatever, holes. But that for sure will lead you to your destination. The other one, you're not, you're not that sure that you're going to, to reach to your destination. Because even though you go... To a full speed, it's very dangerous because things can happen and can cause you death. So the same thing in our lives, in our spiritual life. If you're taking that road, definitely will cause you spiritual death. And physical also. Because living without God, it's like a plant without sun and without water is not going to survive right it's going to dry up so every one and each one of us without god in our lives without faith in him without trust in him we're just going to dry up and die spiritually so if knowing these things Listening to the words of the, the, the Apostle Paul, do we now understand what faith in God is? Do we understand what love for him is? Do we understand what love for his creation is? So if we do understand what this means, then something has to change. And this something is our own heart, our own mind. We have to, to control our mind. What we are receiving, because there is a lot of information, but not every information is good for us. Not every information is beneficial for our salvation. We have to receive and to allow our brain, our mind, to receive only what is good for us. The rest, deny it. Because the evil one, He's throwing a lot in there, and the brain is like a sponge. When a sponge in water is going to absorb it, right? Exactly. So the same thing is with our brain. Absorbs all the dirt that the devil throws in it, it in there, and we are we're confused. So where are we standing? What we are doing? Why we're doing this way? Why are we not doing the opposite way? And we are finding ourselves in this dilemma. And it, 
it's it's a spiritual dilemma because we're losing the connection with the creator we're losing life eternal because this is our goal we were created for life eternal we were created for happiness for joy we were created to be in communion with the creator not away from him not without him because we are becoming orphans when we are far from him and for his grace for, from his mysteries from his church we are orphans we are living darkness instead of living paradise we are living darkness we are living hell on earth starting here and it's upon us it's we have to make our own decision looking at all these saints they made their decision they made the choice they took the narrow road or path and they followed that because Jesus did the same thing he lived in poverty he showed us the true Christian way and this is what he wants us to do he said follow me so let us follow him let us embrace him let us embrace the evangelical words the evangelical salvific words because everything that he taught the apostles put it in the holy gospel for us and the reading of the apostles they put it for us to have answers for every single dilemma in our life every single question we will find it through prayer we'll find it through fasting we'll find it through love towards each other so these are the crucial key for the opening the door for the eternity let us make sure that we are hanging on to his words and we're taking it seriously and following it seriously and let us let us try to make less excuses <clears throat> but let us act truly as Christians truly as sons and daughters of the Most High God and let us prove that we yes we are your creation we are your sons and daughters and we love you and we want to follow you willingly and unconditionally not forced by anyone because only the evil one is lying and twisting everything and making everything according to his own will and understanding <clears throat> but who is he he is the fallen one he has no power he has no strength he is nothing and all the saints of our church proved it that when you believe in him when you trust him when you follow him nothing can stop you there are, there are no barriers so let us clean up these barriers by following him by having this firm faith in him and in his word and his divinity and in his grace and embrace it and all together with one voice to we say to confess his holy and truly in name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.